Namaste gang, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, host Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well. Welcome to today's Chelsea news video where two pieces, well, to be honest man, one piece of news, one piece of gossip, which I'm gonna give you my opinion on, and something else that I wanted to discuss. And that thing is Callum hudson Doy. He's got a bit cold ever since he returned from his potentially career-ending injury, but I wanna remind you the kind of numbers this kid is posting, how it's positive he has come back to full fitness, and really, how Chelsea need to not sleep on this kid, because he could be a massive player for Chelsea going forwards. And I mean, absolutely huge. The rumours in today's headlines is Alexandro and Emerson Palmieri could potentially be swapped between Chelsea and Juventus. Would you even want that? This is very, very, very gossipy, so I'm just going to offer my opinion and move on with that. And of course, UEFA have been coming out and telling people, you know what, if the seasons can't be finished, let's just give Champions League to who's over the... Blah, blah, blah. You know what, if the domestic leagues cannot be finished, let's give the Champions League spots to people in current places or sporting merit and stuff. I'll get into it in a moment. Quick shout out though to Football Therapy, my channel, because yesterday it turned one year old. Can you Adam and Eve it, mate? A year! I mean, I didn't even know someone had to tell me, but it's been going for a year. Incredible. Over 49,000 subscribers now, which is superb. So, just going to take a moment to thank you there, watching this video for your support along the way throughout the year, reaching this incredible milestone. And I'd never in a million years imagine that I'd be nearing 50,000 subscribers, which looks like it could happen relatively soon. So, thank you, all you guys. Oh yeah, subscribe and notifications and like the video. <laughs> So yeah, UEFA, Lona. UEFA have been um, having chats, talks, meetings, etc. And they've been figuring out how to decide the Champions League spots. If indeed domestic leagues cannot be concluded. They're basically saying they want it to be done on sporting merit. And that reflects in a couple of ways. The first being, whoever's in those particular places now qualify for the Champions League. So one to four, for example, in the Premier League. For the moment, let's just put a pin in Manchester City's ban because ja, ja. one to fourth in the Premier League. Or some people are speculating that it will be calculated on a points per game calculation. Regardless, some people have done the maths and Chelsea still remain fourth even if it's done via points per game. So as things stand, Chelsea would be in a secured, locked position for your way for Champions League's next campaign, whatever that is starts if indeed it does or if football ever comes back great news right happy fun times honestly though that is really good i thought they might try some sort of peculiar playoff thing or something that there'd be risk involved but as things stand if there's no more football played for this campaign there probably will be but if there isn't chelsea would get champions league football next season very very nice before we talk about this alexandro story and i'll give you my opinion on the left back i do want to talk about callum hudson adoy right ollie harvard of football.london published an article on the player basically again reminding people of his talents and what chelsea have and how frank lampard feels about the player and it got me thinking you know hudson adoy throughout his whole youth career has been regarded as an incredible talent like a bright spark very very direct he himself said on the live stream yesterday on instagram yes the same one where he talked about playing with Jadon Sancho and how he'd love for him to come to Chelsea, that live stream. He talked about his style because his idol was Ronaldinho and he said, no, my style's not like Ronaldinho, I'm direct, I just want to go to the goal, get things done. And that's true, I've watched him live a few times and we've all watched him live on coverage when in confidence and in form, he is a very, very direct player. Now it's all very well talking about his superb youth career, winning everything and scoring superb wonder goals and being an incredible threat, but Remember, this kid made his debut for Chelsea at 17, and he sort of rose to sort of semi-stardom in the Europa League playing for Maurizio Sarri. He had an amazing campaign in Europe that forced his way into the Premier League team. He had not really made like a Premier League debut, and he had his England debut under Gareth Southgate, his first team England debut. This kid, obviously we all know the Bayern Munich story, they were going in hard for him. He was widely regarded as one of the bright sparks in European football. In Europe, that campaign, Callum hudson Adoy only started four games, yet he contributed to six goals. Six contributions and four starts ain't bad, and he maintained an 89% passing accuracy, which for a direct player is a very impressive statistic indeed. And 50% of the games he started, 
he won man of the match. A young teenager, not bad at all. Just as he was coming into form and what a place to start in the Premier League, he endured this injury. Of course, the Achilles injury can end careers. It doesn't, you know, even when you come back, you might not be the same. It's a huge worry. It was a really, really sad thing. But it does look like he's fully healed physically. His mental game just needs to catch up. But people have gone off the boil with Callum to the doy and forgotten about him because he's played a bit on the pitch and hasn't really lit up the pitch like he did before but people should not be concerned with that there is a reason why cho made his england debut so young and not playing any premier league games he's so highly regarded uh, around football people around clubs and managers and coaches and analysts and all those kind of people I know, I'm sure a load of you have as well. I've watched him live a few times. He really is exciting and special. If he gets his mentality straight, if he develops the chemistry with the team again, Chelsea have an amazing player for the future. Let's not forget the first port of call for Frank Lampard when he got appointed Chelsea manager. His first thing he wanted to do was Callum hudson and needs to stay. He knows what this player is about. Jody Morris would have told him this kid is something special. And although there's no guarantee he will tear up the league for years to come, he's absolutely got the talent and ability to do so. There's no doubt whatsoever in that. So really it's just whether he does it, but he requires the nurture of the club and the fan base and hopefully positive things are to come. Right then, let's talk about Emerson Palmieri and Alexandro of Juventus. Of course, former Chelsea manager Maurizio Sarri is head coach of Juventus and he is a fan of Emerson. Although, yes, when he <laughs> coached Chelsea back in the day, he said Marcus Alonso is the best left back in Europe. He ain't saying that now, is he? Apparently, journalists say he does want Emerson. And it would, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. He's a good age. He was his starting left back. And he was playing very, very well in the latter stages of Mauricio Sarri's reign at Chelsea. So I could understand why he would want the player. The recent headlines are saying that Chelsea and Juventus would... I don't say consider, there's nothing that's saying that, but there's a proposed swap deal for the left backs. Now, although I have maintained, I've said before and I maintained, I think we will, will actually see swap deals. Now the world has gone crazy. They're a much more sort of viable option in many ways, but I still think this is pretty much a silly gossip story. I want to talk about it because I do talk about the news headlines that come up. But for me, Emerson has come out and pretty much said he wants to fight for his place at Chelsea. So... Whether that means Chelsea will actually want to keep him or not, I don't know. I still think probably they might try and flog him. But Alexandro, man, he's 29 now. This is a player that was spoken about a few years ago in regards to Chelsea. He's still posting relatively good numbers. He's got three goals, three assists in Serie A. He's got, you know, he plays a lot of good long balls and crosses and stuff. But he's 29 going on 30, man. In the Premier League, you need an absolute monster engine on you to run up and down the flanks. We've got Reese James, which is the perfect candidate on the right flank, a very young age. Do you really want to buy a 30-year-old to sort of settle into a new league on the left-hand side? Probably not for me, I'm going to be honest. It's such a shame for Emerson. He looks like an absolute beast and one of the best. We'll never know what happened to him, really. It's a really interesting situation. But to be honest, a swap deal... I'm not so sure. All right, so is lockdown and getting you down? <laughs> Jesus, are you bored? Are you looking for extra stuff to do? Well, come and join me and my FIFA 20 community on Yan's Yard where we're playing every night at 6 p.m. doing live streams and we're building a Chelsea team and playing through Chelsea career mode. It's loads of fun. Everything's open and interactive with you guys. You essentially are having like a sort of a diplomatic choice of who gets signed in the team, how we play, and it's really interactive. I talk to everyone in the chat. Um, it's basically loads of fun, and I want to urge you guys to go check it out and maybe subscribe to Yan's Yard if you enjoy it. I'm going to leave a link in the top of the description. Go check out Yan's Yard. There's loads of episodes on there with nightly streams. They all go up live on the channel after the stream's finished, so you can go back and watch older episodes to give you some context of how the career's going, and I'd really appreciate your support. Also, feel free to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football that's sadly not happening at the moment, and I will see you later. So tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.